moment there are 27 unaccounted for that are still down in the mine. Pike River is one of the largest coal mines in New Zealand and about 30 people were inside. The explosion was caused by a build-up of gas, but some workers did make it out. We've had uh, our afternoon shift underground and uh, we've had communications with a couple of, those, a couple of the employees. And we've had two men return to the surface and they're currently being interviewed and, and uh, trying to determine the, the nature and the, the full extent of the incident. Rescuers are at the scene, but they fear more explosions, meaning it could be days before anybody's found. A welfare centre's been set up nearby for relatives, and after the success in Chile, they won't be giving up yet. Meanwhile, unrest in Madagascar continued today. Police used tear gas to disperse people from the streets of the country's capital. Authorities held talks with a group of rebel military officers. The group threatened to topple the government and set up a ruling military council. And the army chief of staff visited the barracks of the dissident officers near the international airport. The general left after about two hours of discussions without making a statement. The country's president said Wednesday it would crush any rebellion but has taken no action so far against the rebel officers. People who live in the officers' barracks and in nearby areas were ordered to leave today and schools on the outskirts of the capital were evacuated. Well, it's beginning to feel a lot like winter across Vancouver Island. V. Cooper is here with your forecast. It certainly is, Mike. Great news for skiers, of course. They're waiting for Mount Washington to open, and they're going to get an awful lot of snow in the next little while, as is the rest of the island. Let's take a look at what's going on, starting with our satellite picture. There's the system, and really what's happening is it's the Arctic air that's moved right across the province, and that means any precipitation that is falling is going to be falling as wet flurries and then as snow overnight. So let's have a look at the island tomorrow. The bulk of the snow is going to be happening. There is some happening today, but a lot overnight and into tomorrow morning. Now, Port Hardy, you're into clear skies tomorrow as the system moves through, but a high of minus two. Campbell River, Courtney and I are right down the east coast of the island. You have between five and 10 centimeters expected overnight and into tomorrow morning. It's great for the Parksville Santa Claus Parade. It's going to feel very Christmassy out there, but fun a lot because lows tonight anywhere between minus 2 and minus 4. Your highs tomorrow around 1 degree. A little bit warmer, of course, on the west coast. High of 4 degrees tomorrow. It's going to be a beautiful day, but it's going to be very difficult to get there because very cold in Port Alberni. High tomorrow of minus 2. Flurries in the forecast, and I'm sure it will be very treacherous driving. So do be careful if you're driving in that region. For Victoria, we are looking at rain. It's going to be flurries overnight, and then again with that mild high of 4 degrees. Sort of wet flurries mixed with rain tomorrow. Wind, though, is also in the forecast, 40 to 60 kilometers an hour from the southeast. So it's going to be quite a crazy weekend. Quick look across the province. The, there is that Arctic air. You can see Fort St. John very cold, Prince George minus 10. Clear for Prince Rupert, to get, uh, zero degrees for a high. Kamloops, Kelowna, Cranbrook, all expecting flurries. Vancouver, flurries in the morning, and then could see a little bit of the sun in the afternoon with a high of two degrees. But again, it is going to be snowing right across the island of Lower Mainland, so do be careful if you are driving. Here's a quick look across the country. Lots of snow in lots of areas. Minus 16 in Calgary. Winnipeg, clear, but minus 13 for a high. Still mild for Toronto, nine degrees with a mix of sun and cloud tomorrow. Snow expected for Montreal and for Halifax, wet flurries in the forecast with a high of 6, and also some wet flurries for St. John's with a little bit of sunshine as well. So that's a look at your weather. The bulk of the snow is starting today. It'll certainly be falling overnight. 5 to 10 centimeters expected for East Vancouver Island. Anywhere about 2 to 4 centimeters for Victoria with up to 10 at higher elevations. Again, on the west coast of the island, it's not going to be so heavy, but inland Port Alberni, you're going to be expecting a lot of snow. So please, drive carefully out there. And if you are going to Parksville Santa Claus Parade, have fun, bundle up, and be sure to wave to the check float. Mike, that's your weather. Thank you, V. Well, finally, we want to bring you up to date on the story of an alleged Hollywood conspiracy that's brought actor Randy Quaid to Canada looking for asylum. Quaid and his wife, Evie, say they're on the run from a group of so-called star whackers who are killing celebrities. 22 Minutes' Mark Critch has been following the story and spent some time with the Quaid's to see if they're ready to become Canadian citizens. These are some questions that uh, uh, immigrants to Canada would, would have to answer to become Canadian citizens. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you. Here's a question from the ten, test way. All right, let's see, let's see what you can do. Oh, is this from the immigration test? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. What's the name of the Prime Minister of Canada? 
Steve Harper. What did the Hudson Bay Company control? They controlled the fur trade. What year was Confederation? <laughs> Come on. Confederation, 1867. Come on! Is that four for four? Forget it, Quaid. Huh? I don't want to talk oh, anymore. Ask me some questions about Parliament. Okay, Randy, you've done pretty good there, buddy. Um, there's one last thing, though. There's one last important test to find out if you can really be a Canadian. Are you ready? Another question? Sort of. Mm. Ready? Ready. Oh! Sorry, now listen, don't get mad. Don't get mad. Hang on, okay? Before you get mad, I want you to think like a Canadian. I just hit you. What should you say? I'm sorry. Welcome to Canada, buddy. Thanks, Mark. Great to be here. <laughs> oh, Canada, our home and naked land. Oh, boy. That will do it for another BC News and weather update. We have plenty more coming up right after the break and throughout the afternoon on Check. Stay with us. and I'm looking for feature stories in our community. I mean, that's what we do is we reflect our community here on Vancouver Island. If you have any great story ideas that aren't so much newsy but interesting to the public, we'd like to know about them. Give me a call or email me. Come into Dublin and Jay Wilson's for that unique and exclusive gift. Choose that exceptional present from their abundant selection. From Burberry, you will discover scarves, purses, sweaters, outerwear, and accessories galore. Find your special holiday outfit with W and J Wilson's expert staff. For that special someone, discover that hard to find gift. Visit W and J Wilson and be rewarded with fashion, quality, and friendly service. W and J Wilson, proud to be a part of Victorian Christmas since 1862. Your Nanaimo store has the best selection. I'd like to buy every single piece of furniture in your store. West Coast Solid Wood Furnishings has a solid reputation with our customers. Come in and find out why. Solid Wood, Solid Value. West Coast Solid Wood Furnishings in Nanaimo. It's time for some jolly good gift ideas at the Chris Kringle Craft Market, November 18th to 21st. Come to the Parksville Community and Conference Center for this one-of-a-kind jury art and craft show and sale. Over 150 talented craft people from all over BC. Have your photo taken with Chris Kringle. Entertainment every day. And the Chris Kringle Craft Market has over $5,000 in prizes to be given away. Truly a Christmas experience for the whole family. The Chris Kringle Craft Market, November 18th to 21st in Parksville. Here's a coloring contest just for kids. If you're between 5 and 12, enter for a chance to ride on Santa's float in the Island Farm Santa's Light Parade in November. Enter by drawing a picture of yourself sitting in Santa's sleigh found in the Times columnist. And if I show yours during Check News Weather, you'll win an Island Farm's prize pack and you're entered for the grand prize. Free ice cream for a year and a ride in Santa's sleigh. Moms and dads, don't delay. Get your child's artwork into Check News today. Hi, I'm Tess Van Stratton, and I hope you'll join us as we gather donations for the community. Come to the 17th Annual Chess drive through on December 10th at the Accent Inn on Blanchard for non-perishable food items and reusable clothing for the Salvation Army to give to the need. Come meet your favorite Czech personalities. Let's make this the best year ever. The 17th Annual Czech Christmas drive through Friday, December 10th from 5 to 7 at the Accent Inn on Blanchard. Proudly sponsored by Save On Foods. is a BC News and Weather Update. Here's Mike Walker. Good afternoon. The BC Liberal Party has made it official today. Former Energy Minister Bill Bennett has been kicked out of caucus after slamming Premier Gordon Campbell during a press conference on Wednesday. But the opposition party is making headlines today as well. NDP leader Carol James was dealt another blow when MLA Katrine Conroy resigned as the party's caucus whip this afternoon. The Kootenai West MLA was supported by several other NDP MLAs who attended her press conference at the legislature. The resignation comes one day before James is expected to defend her leadership at a meeting in Victoria. Party insiders will meet for a policy debate tomorrow, but 
The biggest items on their agenda are resolutions to hold a leadership convention next year and reinstate ousted MLA Bob Simpson to caucus. Both are direct shots at James and mark a culmination of weeks of public infighting in which a handful of NDP constituency associations have publicly questioned her ability to win the 2013 election. Police in Nanaimo have seized almost $100,000 in cash and 2.5 kilograms of cocaine after a routine traffic stop last week. Local drug officers observed the vehicle driving erratically while going northbound along Highway 19A last Friday morning. The driver, a 27-year-old male from Victoria, was questioned, and when officers continued with their investigation, they discovered $39,000 in the trunk of the vehicle. Officers were then able to connect the money to a 24-year-old Nanaimo man who was later arrested when cocaine was discovered in his vehicle and nearly $60,000 at his home. Both men are expected to make their first court appearance in January. With Ruby Ann Ruffalo now sentenced to life in prison for the murder of her husband seven years ago, there was finally closure for the family last night. They say the public has never really learned what the true John Ruffalo was like. Yesterday, Ruffalo's family sat down with Czech News to remember the man they knew as a loving son, brother, and father. 36-year-old John Ruffalo worked as a security guard and a prison guard. His parents and sisters say he always thought of others before himself and cherished his family, especially his daughter, Giovanna. We just miss him. He belongs here, and, but, and what was so hurtful at the beginning when this happened because we were in no condition to speak to the media, they took what they could from the murderer and uh, portrayed him as a drug user, dealer, an escort servant. He did none of those things. My son, he was a respectful man. He worked all his life. He done what any father would do for the child or children. He, he basically was selfless. Like he just did everything for everyone else and he loved his family. I remember John mostly as just water running off the back of a, a dock. He just let it go in, go out, and everything was funny. Three members of the Victoria Police Department and several island RCMP officers were recognized at the 2010 Police Honors Night. Victoria Police Constable Sandy Begg was presented the highest award for BC police officers, the Award of Valor after rescuing her sister from the fast-moving waters of Bilston Creek. Constables Corey Moore and Deborah Wyatt were also given awards for meritorious service. Constable Moore prevented the suicide attempt of a woman on the rooftop of a Quadra Street building in August, while Constable Wyatt dove into the frigid waters of the Selkirk Waterway to complete a marine rescue last November. Police Honors Night provides an annual occasion for the province to recognize members who have performed exemplary service this year, there were 58 RCMP and municipal offers honored from across the province. Well, you might have handed them one for their safety, but giving your kids a cell phone comes with its share of danger as well. Today, a new program was unveiled to promote safe texting. As the look in the three finds out, there's a reason teenagers need a warning. Like it or not, it's the way a lot of us communicate. And for teenagers, texting is the easiest way to stay in touch. But how many texts do you think you send? A day, probably 20. If it's like a lot a day, it'll be like 50 to 100 times. If you're in a big conversation with your friends or something. Well, I'm not like a big texter, but I would say maybe 10 to 15. And to who? You look at my parents, tell them where I am if I'm out of the house. According to one study this year, the average teen sends more than 3,000 texts per month. That's about six texts for every waking hour. No other age group comes even close to that level of texting. Part of the reason for this new website, texted.ca tries to teach kids the stuff they don't know about texting, like how taking a compromising picture of someone, then sending it to someone else, could lead to hundreds of copies as the message gets forwarded in a matter of minutes. We've seen an increase in the number of complaints and criminal allegations, criminal investigations in relation to texting, sexting, um, and kids with their online behavior. The site is designed for kids aged 13 to 17 with different scenarios, quizzes, and a list of shorthand vocabulary. Parents can use it to get a bit more tech savvy as well. 
that's my uh, one of my ways I communicate with my son actually is through text last night I actually texted him I could hear him go to bed this is where you can take your opinions the Prime Minister's wife Laureen got a lesson as well thank you very much since teens are so good at getting the word out quickly Laureen has been a messages about safety will spread ADN. That's texting shorthand for any day now. Well, Vancouver Island and parts of the mainland are bracing for the first significant snowfall of the season tonight. As much as 5 to 10 centimeters of the white